Hello and good morning, Bill. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. What is it like for you as a writer to put the words on the page that actually came from a place in your personal life and then today you're sharing your personal journey with those that have chosen to listen? I mean, this this is such a full circle event and a lot of people don't get to experience what you're doing today, sir. It's quite a rush. I, I, I mean, especially this book, which is really as uh, sensitive an issue as there is in my life. This is really the white hot moment of my life when we're talking about coming of age in New York City at the beginning of the AIDS epidemic. So yeah, it's, it's uh, a rush and a little scary. And you know, the, the, the coming of an age in in a in a world where you you know you were you were you, like the character says here, you 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 thought you were coming out of the closet, you know, nice and strong, but in reality, it, it really wasn't happening as, as strong as what some people may have picked up on. For for a coming of an age story, though, this is amazing because we we're not used to this, and I think this is a beautiful first step. Thank you. I, I mean, I think that it's um, it's a story that needs to be told. Uh, you know, I think especially for younger readers right now, it'll be a, a little bit shocking to uh, go to a time when we didn't have representation of LGBT characters, uh, LGBTQ characters on TV, rate, you know, movies or anything. So uh, total different world. Yeah, because, you know, it, it, let's be honest. I mean, we're both old enough to realize the only time we ever heard about something like this was on the front cover of National Enquirer magazine. We'd all sit there and go, what? Totally. <laughs> I Absolutely. And, and, you know, I was raised with every stereotype that we all were. Mm -hmm. And so uh, as, as a kid who actually I was an athletic kid, I didn't really understand how I could be gay because I didn't know of anybody who was gay who was not a stereotype. Right. So it was a very isolating time, even in New York. The, the book is called Destination Unknown. I love the fact that you went back to 1987, right in the center of the AIDS epidemic. We're, we're talking about, it's, uh, because I was there, I, I we all lived it, but there's a lot of people today, dude, that, you know, AIDS did not go away. It's still here, and we need stories like this to say, knock, knock, knock. Absolutely. You know, you know it's so true. It's, it's really kind of a classist and racist idea that, that AIDS has gone away. I mean, we're still 5,000 people a year uh, in the U.S. are still dying uh, of AIDS. And, uh, you know, I've met young people who, who don't know anything about it, young queer people who don't know anything about it. Yeah. So this is an important thing to, to get out there. Yeah, because I think the closest thing to it that people nowadays are, can relate with is the COVID-19. And I, and I would love to know how, how that has infected everything. Because, I mean, people aren't together like they used to be or want to be. I mean, wh how, how would Micah and CJ handle a situation like this? <laughs> well... It would be so different. I mean, one of the big differences between AIDS and COVID is that uh, COVID is impacting everyone. So yeah. The entire society is sort of coming together. And I think a big part of this story is this feeling for both Michael and CJ. It's like, am I going crazy? Why is it that I know this thing is happening and I see these people dying in the streets and so on and no one's talking about it? So it's, it's very different in that way. Now, compared to, let's say, San Francisco versus New York City, what, was it a different time period for you personally? Because, I mean, I mean, to, when the research that you've done this, you're going back to 87, but, but both city, cities were under attack. Absolutely. Both cities were under attack. I grew up in New York. Uh, my understanding is that San Francisco banded together, as it would, because Californians are like that. Right. And New York, <laughs> we, we really struggled. Uh, you, you know, I think... Anything to do with the idea of, of being gay was something that was unacceptable at the time. So it just wasn't talked about, uh, certainly not in the mainstream. So for, uh, real, a real challenging time. For Micah and CJ, was it like the forbidden fruit? It's like they, they knew what was going on, but they didn't. But at the same time, temptation is something that you can't run away from. I, I think that they're two different kids, and I think uh, very different approaches. So yeah. Micah is a more sort of conservative, scared kid. And there's a part of me from my life in that. And then there's CJ, who's kind of a wild child and who, <laughs> who is just, as you're saying, like forbidden fruit. And, uh, you know, there are definitely lots of different ways, but I wanted to explore both of those avenues. How did you go back in and do the uh, the research? Because, I mean, in 1987, I mean, what, what, what does the preacher man always say? He says, you can't go back in your past because you're just going to rewrite it. In a way, did you just rewrite it? <laughs> uh, it was actually a lot of fun to 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 remember what I could and to use my uh, social media to ask people who were there questions for what I didn't. Uh, and, and I'll tell you, one of the 
things that I loved about the 80s was the music. And yes. I, I really leaned on music in this book. Uh, and that was a lot of fun, too, to just go back to that time. Best music. All right. Now, is that is that the reason why you've got the, the uh, Micah and CJ dancing on the front cover of Destination Unknown? Yeah, I think, uh, <laughs> you know, they meet in a club, so that's sort of where it is. But, like, yeah, the music is center. Uh, I just don't know what happened. You know, I'm an old guy, but, but <laughs> I think the 80s is where it peaked. <laughs> And and fashion was was just like the thing. I mean, I mean, for you to be in that yeah. moment of writing, I mean, I can't I just imagine what was going on inside your imagination. Yeah, you know, it was. I mean, God, you remember there was the big hair and there yeah. were the mullets and there was all this stuff. And it was it was. It's funny that at the time, and I'm sure this is true every of every generation. You think you're so cool, and then you look at it in 20 years, and things are different. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, we were we were the coolest, except for if you look at us now, we look really foolish. See, that's that's the way I feel. I'm, I've been a daily writer uh, since July of 1994. I can go back on any day, yeah. all the way back to that time period. And you're right about those moments where you think you're cool, because when you go back and you look at it, you're going, you know, that was kind of a stupid move. That really was not. You know, I don't care how <laughs> brave you are. That are are you a daily writer as well, and keeping a journal? Um, I was when, I, and that, by the way, helped me with writing the book. Is that I was as a teenager, yeah. so that really helped me get back in that mind frame. I'm not anymore. You know, I do so much writing for my books that I just. I wish I was, though. I think it's such a smart thing you're doing. Well, what, what you did as a teenager is everything that I talk about on iHeartRadio when I say when you're writing in that journal, it's Dear Future Reader. You're leaving breadcrumbs for your future <laughs> self. Absolutely. And, and I don't think that people understand necessarily uh, that the history history is now. So, so like I, I was saying this at my launch last night for this book, that it's like um, you don't understand that we're going to have different understandings of the time that you're living through right now. So explore it, you know. Write it down. Get it. The book we're talking about is Destination Unknown, and you talked about it just a little bit ago about about uh, uh, CJ being a little bit more opposite than Micah. Um, what what was that like for you to put that into paragraphs? Because, I mean, opposites do attract, but at the same time, they can also disconnect. Yeah, you know, uh, they're very different, and one of the really fun things about this book is that CJ, uh, along with being a wild child, is a liar. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> so, so it's oh, fun to write somebody who is telling us stuff and you don't know what's true both as a reader and the character. Uh, and I really had a, had a good time with that. To this moment, I still don't know whether some of CJ's stories are true. <laughs> so let me, let me ask you a question. <laughs> writer to writer here, in the way that I, I, I remember mm -hmm. releasing a book and, and, and one of my friends goes, that character is me and you didn't get my permission. Do you ever run into that? And, and I, you, know, you explain to him going, <laughs> no, it was not you, but, but it was me because I, mean, I, I know what, what happened. Do you ever run into things like that? Yeah, I, I do. Uh, I, I think that, you know, people have to understand that writers are pillagers and we use our life. And uh, we, we try, I hope, most of us to be sensitive to other people's wants and needs. But look, um, don't say anything in front of me if you don't want it in a book. <laughs> it may well wind up there. I just that's how I, I use my life. Oh, my God. That's how I feel about podcasting and stuff like that. I go, you sure you want to talk to me about this? Because it's going on the air. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You know, not a secret anymore. <laughs> yep. So, how important is a thesaurus to to you in your writing? And because I mean, you you've got to you've got to be able to speak the street, and you do that so well with Destination Unknown. But at the same time, you're still an artist, and artists love to play with words. Yes. Uh, you, you know, I have learned uh, in my time that uh, one of the things that was hardest for me to do as a writer was to stop repeating myself with yep. words that are good. Uh, and so, yes, I use a thesaurus. You just have to change it up. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's very valuable. I, I'm, I'm constantly on that. And, of course, I use my computer thesaurus. Mm -hmm. But, yes. So do you run into those moments, though, Bill, when, when people go, you're using too big of words? Or did your editor ever uh, say that to you? No, because I, I really come from uh, – I was a journalist for the Associated oh, Press. Beautiful. So I had that yep. sort of uh, – taken away from me years ago. Uh, I'm a very uh, sort of Hemingway kind yeah. of writer. Yeah. Too brief to the point and simpler words. I just, I like reading that way. Yeah, see that, see that being in radio for 43 years, you're absolutely right about that because while we're writing, we envision the reader and, and, and we know that they're there and they're mm -hmm. looking over our shoulder. Totally. And so you have to be uh, aware, it's like you have one eye as yourself and one eye as the reader and you're just trying to 
uh, you know, hit the balance right. Now, coming from the LGBTQ uh, crowd and, and groups of people and supporters and stuff like that, have you been offended by the fact that they're trying to attach the monkeypox to this because they're saying, well, you know, people are getting together that shouldn't be getting together. And it's like, why would you attach this to a group of people? <laughs> right. I, I mean, I think that, you know, having lived through the AIDS epidemic, it's sort of like, oh, here we are again. Yeah. Um, y- you know, I mean, there, there is a truth, you know, as it turns out, uh, this thing, the monkeypox started at a LGBT event in Europe. And so that is the group of people it attached itself to. But uh, I think we're doing a pretty good idea, a job of mostly getting away from that kind of incendiary uh, language, yeah, mostly. But, yeah, because we just had Charlotte Pride here and, and uh, Pride Week. And the thing is that really it kind of offended me when they when all the big league uh, decision makers were saying, well, um, we're, we're not we're not saying that monkeypox is attached to it, but we're going to send out 3000 uh, vaccines. I'm going, you just said, wait, you just said that it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you, you know, we're talking out of both sides of our mouth. And, and you know, uh, what was so interesting about this monkeypox thing is, you know, for so many years, for decades, uh, many gay people have been angry at Republicans because Reagan and his, uh, you, you know, uh, time in office, he was not paying attention to AIDS. Well, here we are with the Democratic president. Yeah. It didn't go very well. Yeah. So that was a very interesting lesson to learn. Well, speaking of lessons, they always say that from dark times, there comes greater times. And do you think that the AIDS epidemic actually opened up gay activism in the world to where people could finally step out and make their, their presence known? A hundred percent. Thank you. You know, I think that the, the, the way that this happened was with the organization ACT UP, and I was there for it. I was part of it. Uh, it was finally time for gay people to say enough. Yeah. And I think that we have taught ourselves and each other and the world what, you know, useful activism looks like. Uh, I'm, I'm really proud of the gay community for that. So now does there does a sequel need to happen? And the reason why, because Micah and CJ <laughs> are living in a world where gay marriages were not accepted. But look at where we are now in 2022. Right, will there be a future book where these two get married? So all I'll say is that there is an epilogue in this book nice. uh, that answers that question. And uh, I, I just could not leave the world without, you know, the whole will they, won't they, where are they now? So you, you, you'll find out. It's good. I love the fact <laughs> that you just said you had to leave the world because that's one thing that I like about being a writer is that is the fact that, you know, you when, when you get into that thought, you're gone. And, and so people will try to talk to me while I'm writing oh, yeah. and I have to sit there and kind of go, wait, <laughs> let, let me catch up. Let me get up here where we are right now because I'm not where you are. Oh, my God. Uh, so we call it in our house Bookhead. Uh, and it's just that's where I am. I'm like, I'm living in this world and nobody else is there. And I will want to say, oh, here's what my character said. Nobody cares. Yeah. Uh, so it kind of works both ways. I'm living here. You're living there. Tough to live with a writer, I imagine. That's that's why I always laugh at people that tell me, oh, man, have you been on the metaverse yet? I've been on the metaverse ever since I picked up that writing instrument. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's a good, I hadn't thought of it that way, but yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, We're a different breed. So let's let's talk about Micah's real fear and and you know and outrage and stuff like that because I know that there's listeners that that have that I in in public they have the calm fear and outrage, but behind those doors, no, 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 they're taking it out on something. Yeah, you know, I think that. Um, Rage is behind everything yep. in, in this book, and, and I, I play a lot with three emotions in this book. There's a lot of laughter, there's a lot of tears, and there's a lot of anger. And I think that the answer, in some ways, is anger, uh, because I think that the laughter is a deflection, which is totally normal, mm-hmm. uh, but it's because something outrageous is going on, we don't know how to react. And the tears, uh, is it's appropriate because it's a sad time, but really... It's that anger that mobilizes, and I think in this book, that's sort of how it goes. When when both CJ and Micah, but especially Micah, learns to get angry, uh, things turn around. Ooh, my God, you just touched a big subject there. Learns to get angry because one, you know, once you get that that energy okay. release, I mean, that you got to get that thing under control. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, you know, they always say that uh, depression is anger turned inward. I've suffered from depression. Yep. Uh, boy, is it a big deal to finally kind of come in touch with that other side and just let it go. Yeah, yeah. That's why I keep defrag journals. I do a defrag journal every day where it's like, okay, sit down. We're going to have a conversation wow. with each other, me and you. <laughs> 
that's fantastic. <laughs> I love that. I think that's such a, a healthy and smart way to be. Absolutely. I know we're talking about the book Destination Unknown, but you're a creative person, and I know that your destination is known. You're probably working on several books right now. Uh, I am working on my first adult novel. Really? Uh, I don't have a contract, but I'm really excited about that. It's I, I keep telling people I'm in literary puberty, <laughs> and this is sort of like I'm becoming an adult. So we'll see how that goes. I, 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 I'm never saying never to more young adults. I, I just don't know yet. you got to put on those big boy pants now and put on those big old shoes. They're heavy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Exactly. exactly. you, you got to come back to the show any time in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Oh, thank you so much. This was a pleasure. You bet. Will you be brilliant today, okay? And thank you for what you're doing through thank your you. words on a page. Thank you so much. You too.